Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and today we're talking about HDR. Up until now I have used Skylum's Aurora HDR software, which in my personal opinion was simply the best HDR software out there. However, it's being discontinued, but there is a reason for it. And just on the side, should you be wondering HDR, HDR, that rings a bell but I don't really remember what it is, no problem. In the principle of HDR photography, you simply take multiple images with different exposures, combine them to get the best out of everything. I'll link a video somewhere around here that explains you everything you need to know about HDR photography. So, normally I would throw my stuff into Aurora HDR, then push it over to Photoshop and finally work a little bit on it with Luminar as well, but as a plugin in Photoshop. But Luminar Neo, Skylum's most recent photo editor, has now, just now, gained the ability to do HDR merges as well. So combine multiple images with different exposures. So today I want to check it out and I want to see how it fares. We're going to process four different images, two of which are single images taken at night. So that's not even multiple exposures, that's just one photo, but you can also use a, or create a pseudo HDR if you only take one image. And I want to see how, you know, the, the software can do it, if it can do it at all. And then we're going to do an indoor architectural HDR as well as an outdoor HDR image just with nature. Really just to see, you know, how we like it. Let's jump right in into the HDR merge function of Luminar Neo. Here we are in Luminar Neo. Or Luminar Neo, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, to get to the HDR function, simply go to the left hand corner right here and click the little, the little uh, puzzle piece, jigsaw piece thing doodly. And right here you have the HDR merge plugin. Now, of course for me it's installed, so simply hit the install button once you get here. So we're going to start with a single image, which is this one right at the bottom left hand corner right here. So as is a single shot, you know, not an HDR, I don't have multiple exposures and it looks quite underexposed. So let's go through the tone mapping procedure. Let's, so to speak, merge it with itself, even though that kind of sounds weird, to create a pseudo HDR by simply taking it and dragging it into our HDR merge sort of section right here. Now, because we're only going to throw in one image, we don't have any additional settings right now available, which is grand. So let's just hit the merge button and hang on for a second. Once you go through any HDR merge, you're going to have a folder on the left hand side that is called HDR merge. So right here we have the image that we have just processed. So if we double click on it and we can go to the top to edit, we can start edit this image. But as we can see, after the tone mapping procedure, it looks way more crisp. We have actually recovered a lot of, well, recovered, it was there, but we have brought out a lot of detail from the shadowy areas right here. And now we're just going to do a quick speed edit. Let's head to presets and overcast and there to Arctic Sea. I don't know why, but I really like what it's doing to the image. Let's go to edits and then down to the mood adjustment and bring it down a little bit. So if you see, we can back and forth until we find something that looks good to us. Next we go to tools, down to vignette, and let's simply add an easy, easy vignette as part of that speed editing, just to really round up that image. And there we go, obviously we could do much more, but this is just a speed edit, just to see how it turns out, and I like it. That was an easy tone mapping, no complaints there, let's go to the next one. Our second night image is from a city, so let's take that photo and drag and drop it into the HDR merge section. Hit the merge button. Once again, I double click on the photo and go to edit or to presets, whatever I want to do. But right away I can see that I really like the details that it brought out, especially in the, the trees in the back here, in the buildings themselves, so we can definitely work with that. Nice tone mapping. So let's head to develop, get a little bit of smart contrast in there, bring down the highlights a little bit so that we are not being killed by those. Go to the black and whites, bring out the whites a good bit, I really want this to shine, and bring down the blacks a little bit more because it is a night image. Next we're going to go down to structure and we're going to enhance that structure a little bit just to give it a bit more texture in the middle right here as well as the water. I don't want this everywhere so let's select masking and then go to the brush and we're just quickly going to brush that in right here in the building area as well as the water area right here. Just a little bit speed editing fire free done. Yes that really brought out some nice structure we keep that. And last not least because in every speed edit that's part of it let's go to the vignette and create a little vignette right here. And then, of course, not to forget to bring out the, the inner light a little bit to make the city shine a bit more. And last, last, not least, least, let's go to the color wheel, to the color wheel, to the color section. Go to the HSL section, go to saturation, and then the blues, bring them down a little bit, especially in the sky, because I don't want the sky to, you know, to, to hit us in the face as much as it's doing right now. Maybe something like that. Sweet! Again, that's a decent tone mapping procedure. The noise, especially in the sky area, is okay. I mean, I have a couple of dust spots, but I get rid of that later anyway. But the noise is okay for it being a single image, so I can definitely work with that. And I think for a speed edit, nice. Moving on. 
Next up, let's start with the proper HDR stuff, which is multiple exposures. So I'm going to take these three images right here, drag them over, and I have them, of course, in minus two, zero, and plus two exposure settings. And now that I have multiple images, which, by the way, I took handheld, I can use a couple of settings here. Being handheld, probably I moved my camera a little bit because it wasn't that bright inside. So I'm going to click on auto alignment to make sure the images, when they are stacked on top of each other, they actually, you know, they, they merge properly. The edges are fitting well together. And also, because I do have one person in the image that might be moving between my images, I'm going to hit Ghost Reduction. I want the reference image to be my zero value exposure thing, and that's perfect, so let's hit Merge. Sweet, here we have our image, let's go to the Edit section. Let's do a very quick horizontal alignment crop by simply clicking on Horizontal Alignment, hit the Enter key. With that done, I really want to give it an HDR re-look because it's inside, but you know, this is not Aurora HDR, so I don't have the right sliders in here, so alternatively, I'm going to use the structure slider. So I set the structure and go full power here. And going back and forth, that gives me a little bit of that HDR-y definition from inside. Oh, and yes, let's check, of course, if the HDR process of merging actually worked. It did, we don't have any ghosting on with the person going on. Nope, zoom in there, with the person going on on the left-hand side right here, so that's good. And the images seem to have been overlaid quite well as well, so no complaints on that end. Well, simple and nice HDR merge, I'll take it. Next, in the develop area, simply go to color, and let's increase those colors a little bit by increasing the saturation. Not crazy, a little bit. And as usual, last not least, let's go all the way down, well, all the way down in that section and go to the vignette and add a little bit of a vignette because speed editing, yay, it makes everything look better. Sweet, looking at the before and after and the before and after, I like it. Cool, that worked for indoor. Let's do the last one, which is an outdoor HDR. Let's get going. Here we are, beautiful sunsets. Let's take those bad boys and bring them in here into the HDR merge. Again, I was handheld because I am mostly handheld. And let's just go to auto alignment. And I don't know if there are any cars or something like that or, you know, bicycles driving in the landscape. Let's just do ghost reduction. Why not? Let's just do that. Merge. Okay, here's our photo. Double click on it and let's go to edit. When it comes to the edit, let's crop that down a little bit just from the bottom because I don't need all that mumbo jumbo that's in the foreground there and hit the enter key. Then let's go to the color section and just push it a little bit towards the yellow right here, just ever so slightly, really just a little bit. That's a huge effect. We can bump up the saturation a little bit, a good bit actually. And then once we are done with that, let's close that down. Go to the color section, go to the HSL section, go to the saturation section. So many sections. Increase the orange saturation just a little bit, maybe to something like that. Now I'm going to close that down because then this particular edit with the colors is going to move to the edit section on the top right here. So now if I go to color, I can make actually a new color adjustment, which is quite nice. And in this case, I'm looking at the foreground. I don't want the grass and the trees to be abnormally pushing you the color in their face. So let's bring the yellows down a little bit, maybe to something like that, as well as the oranges in these trees, because otherwise they look like they're burning and that's just not real. Once we have that, let's go to the masking, select the linear gradient and then simply drag and drop from the foreground to the nice and sweet background right there. Now we can go back to adjustments and do whatever we want to do, but that doesn't look bad. I like it. I may have cropped a little bit wrongly here, but you get the idea. Let's add a touch of smart contrast. And as always, add a touch of vignette, because why not be can? It's speed editing, right? Make sure we place the center of the vignette nice and sweet, just above those mountains. And there we go. Could have removed a bit more green here, but whatever, you get the idea. Again, to the tone mapping itself, I like it. There is nothing that I would, you know, call out immediately that is terribly bad. Yes, the mountains are a bit hazy, but that's just the nature of uh, this particular photo. Because, you know, I love them and I hate them, but these are just hazy if you have mountains in the back. So normally I would probably edit this a little bit different, a bit more artistically, let's say. Other than that, I don't see any, you know, fringes. I don't see any anything bad. This worked well. This worked well. And considering this just came out, this is the first iteration, right? So this is only going to improve. And for now, it works solid. I can't complain. The only thing that I would love to see is being able to look at the before and after for the HDR itself. Um, and possibly also adjust a little bit of the settings as the HDR is being created. But that's okay. I can live with that. And they're going to make it only better down the line anyway. Now do keep in mind that this feature has literally just been released. In fact, I think it's only actually going to release two days after this video is being posted. So things that you see may change in terms of, you know, how they look on your screen in the future, which I think is fair. When it comes to pricing, not everything is known at this point because you could have had Aurora HDR 2019 before and owned Luminar. You could have only had one of the two. You could have owned uh, Aurora HDR 2018 before. So there are many things when it comes to pricing that are not yet super clear at this point because as I said, it's not even properly released yet. 
Should you decide to buy it, I am an avid Skylum user of many of their softwares. So I do have, of course, an affiliate code. Make sure that if you want to make me rich, simply use the code Let's Image at checkout to gain, uh, I think, 10 bucks off whatever you buy. Not the HDR Merch plugin itself, but uh, for instance, Lumina Neo. This is not really making me rich. A man can dream though, can't he? So, I hope you liked that quick view into the HDR Merch plugin for Luminar Neo. I think I'm slowly going to transition because I have to if Aurora HDR is going to be discontinued at some point. So better get used to the new stuff now. Otherwise, if you're new to the channel, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe because it's going to help me out a lot. I shall see you next time, just probably with a new start to finish editing tutorial. And until then, stay safe and have a good one. Bye!